Hi everyone, this is James. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with us. Please give us a like. And if you're new to the channel, a subscribe would be great. And don't forget to hit that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Big shout out to all of our recent subscribers. Halo, the long awaited series. Move for movie. It was going to be a movie. Now it's a series. It's for 20 years we've been waiting for Halo to hit us in some capacity. I'm joined now with Rob McDonald, who is a massive Halo gaming fan. Hey, Rob. How's it going, James? I'm oh, a big going. fan of. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Halo. I also even uh, read a bunch of the books too that you can see a little bit back there as well. So you, yeah, I'm a, I'm you a love big Halo. Halo fan. Big fan. You've been Halo. Antici you've been anticipating this for a long time. We're gonna we're gonna obviously review this uh, and talk about what we liked, maybe what we didn't like, but mostly I, I want to know first. The trailer dropped on the Super Bowl or around no, it was uh, the week before. Whatever it was, one of the championships. Whatever it was, the NFL weekend. It dropped. Yeah. Uh, what were your first impressions from that trailer as a, as a fan of the games? I mean, um, like I was, I, I, I was pretty big fan of it. Like it was, like I was already expecting, like that it was gonna at least look very, uh, very much uh, similar to the games, like the look of the armors, it's just like straight out of the games and whatnot. So yeah, I was, I was liking it. I mean, I, I, I don't remember being able to fully delve into it because I, I remember at the same time, roughly the same time that trailer dropped, I was also in China. So uh, yeah, it was, I, I wasn't able to experience the hype of it and feel the hype of it as much as I would have, I think, if I was, uh, if I was back around. Yeah. All right, so it drops today, March twenty fourth. Halo finally mm -hmm. comes up, Paramount Plus, long awaited. There's going to be that Peter Jackson movie, but anyway, none of that happened. This is what we get. We get this. I mean, weeks a week ago, we got the thing where the creators like we didn't even look at the games. You know, and I've seen a lot of uh, people complaining online about it before it even debuted. And now we finally have this uh, show and uh, it starts off. I thought it started pretty strong. It, it, for, it was kind of like I was like in, enjoying it. It kind of teetered on like sci-fi channel quality for some of the opening. I was like, eh, you get you. Like I was like, uh, there's a few lines of dialogues. I was like, yeah, you're you're not quite you're not quite quality. Like it was it was really borderline, right? There's times I'm like, ooh, epic, and then I was like, oh no, you've gone like you know, uh, cable television. So it was kind of like whatever. Um, but it was an enjoyable opening, and then we meet like the aliens show up, obviously, and. And then the Spartans arrive, and I gotta say, I thought the costumes for them. I, like I played Halo, I, I owned the first one twenty whatever years ago it was when it first came out. I played it a lot, played it with friends all the time, but I haven't played it much since. Um, but I thought their costumes of the Spartans were phenomenal, and I love the texture on them. Like you could, it, it looked, it didn't look like a video game adaptation. It looked like oh, that exists in a real world. Whereas other parts of of it, like little subtle things, were like oh, that looks like a video game adaptation, even though they probably weren't. It's just the production design looked a little bit like that. But those costumes for me, I thought they were great. Oh yeah, the the armor looks awesome. Like I said, like looks like straight out of the video games for a lot of it, especially Master Chief's armor. Like uh like you, you see it right there. That's that's the video game helmet right there. Uh that that uh he wears in the video games and that looks like straight out of it. And yeah, I, I think I think the way the the amount of money that they uh delved into it for the most part was uh pretty commendable and you could see it on screen, especially like you said in that opening sequence for the most part. One thing that was driving me nuts was the doctors why do they wear leather i just like everybody was wearing leather i'm like like how come like i don't like that like no the future doesn't always have to be leather get away <laughs> i would like something a little bit more realistic but that's just me uh what, what did you what were your take like the opening scene and takeaway what did you think of the overall plot though as a halo fan so as a Halo fan, like that's where, you know, I feel like uh, a lot of like diehard Halo fans might be turned off a little bit because if you, if you talk about the plot of this and like the way they specifically uh, uh, sh present the UNSC, like they're, they're much more like like much more darker than, than, than they, than they would be representing most, most of the games. And for the most part in the games, it's just like, uh, the uh, the UNSC, they're the good guys, and the the uh, Covenant, they're the bad guys, and that's simply it. Meanwhile, they presented it almost immediately because you immediately see it from these this uh, magical um, uh, uh, planet and uh, and this t townspeople of the Oilers, I believe that's what it was, right? That was an oil oiling uh, 
um, uh, facility that they were at. Uh, you specifically right, right off the bat see it from their point of view where you see the, the stuff about UNSC and they talk about like propaganda and all that all that type of stuff. So it's like it's right away starting to paint like the UNSC in kind of a negative uh, negative light to at least a group of people. So that was that was right away pretty interesting for me. But it was like when you look at the Spartans themselves, the way they showed up, that was straight out of the video game. Like straight up to like you know the way they were attacking the elite and uh, facing them. I was kind of hoping to see um, uh, some of the some of the other guys like um, the uh, the little guys if they were going to show up. But no, they went all elite for the first part. And I hope that we actually get to see uh, the little guys later. But uh, yeah, it was it was it, it felt straight out of the video games, especially like with uh, the uh, cloaking uh, elite that l left right at the beginning. There was the. They say that they didn't really uh, pitch the games a part of it, but you could tell at least the sound designer was a huge fan of the games, like so much so that they took the exact sound effects that they would make uh, for specific weapons and specific things uh, in, in the uh, games and project them straight into this uh, this TV series. I think it's impossible not to look at the games. They might not have obsessed over the games or anything like that, but I think they definitely... They definitely looked at them. One of the things that a lot of people were talking about was whether or not we would see Master Chief's face in this show. And a lot of people were discussing it. And of course, uh, we'll get into it. But the plot leads you in that direction that it's going to happen because I'm, I, I don't, I, from my knowledge of Halo, like what I've played of Halo, I don't really remember the plot. I just remember you're on, which is something I want to get into. You're on a ring, a Halo in space, and you're shooting aliens. And I, that's a lot of fun and whatever. <laughs> I, I've never really cared about the plot. It's never been a thing, and I haven't played it in a while. This movie, right away, I was like, "Well, where's the where's the Halo <laughs> that that it's supposed to be? Why is it called Halo if they're not on a Halo?" But the other thing too is like this plot was like, are are, are there plots in Halo that resemble this at all? Because I've heard that there's not. But I, I kind of, like my thing with this plot though, Rob, was it felt like okay, it, and I actually enjoyed the episode. I should say I enjoyed it for the most part, but like. Like the plot itself, I was like, okay, sure. It, it almost was like, oh, it wants to be like a Mandalorian type show where like the, the you know Master Chief and the kid. It's and it was like, I'm like, eh, okay, fine. And I'm just, you know, what they always have to shove kids in things, and always, it always gets frustrating for me. But I, I, I just, what, what were your overall takeaways from the plot from a video game perspective? So again, like like you said, uh, you said that you know this didn't really feel like something similar to the games and you're 100 percent correct correct james like it's like there's no there, there's no even introduction or mention of a halo as far as i could tell in this yeah. uh, in this in, in in this series but the, you know it's not really necessary i mean they, they've done plenty of books where the, the actual halo wasn't wasn't a part of it in any type oh. of way right like the halo is literally just a weapon so this is this is just uh delving into um like the characters in the universe, I think first, and eventually they'll lead to that. Because I mean, if you want to talk about something that's similar, as soon as you play, start playing the games, like there's no, they're, they're setting up for the Cortana, but there's no Cortana here yet either. Right. So it's like, uh, that's like, when you talk about relationships, it's the master chief Cortana relationship. That's really the big one in, uh, the halo games and you know you don't get any of that so far here we'll get it eventually because we've seen it in the trailers that cortana does eventually show up uh but yeah like like i don't i don't fault you for say, comparing it a little bit to mandalorian and that you know it's going to be him and this little and this uh girl even though she's like a teenager versus like a child like how it is uh there we'll see how that works out um and um yeah like I'm I, I I'm I'm not sure about it, but I also like that they're that they're already like starting to paint things in a di in different strokes. Like I'm liking the way they're setting up the UNSC and like the politics within the UNSC and making them a little bit maybe corrupt in so in a lot of ways, giving you like the dark they, side of the UNSC. Yeah, I like that they were like just kill them and all that. I kind of like that. I thought the the beginning with the talking about them with the the Oilers or whatever, thought it was a little bit over the top with their hatred. Um, and then when the Spartan, here's, you know what really annoyed me with that opening scene? It was a lot of fun, but what annoyed me was when the, the humanoids were shooting the aliens, like their bullets did nothing to the aliens. But then when Master Chief grabbed the human weapon, it like completely took them out. I was a little uh, misunderstanding on how weapons worked on these aliens, uh, but they were cool. I didn't like the, the dad's death kind of, I was like, Ugh. it was it, just kill him early. Like, it was predictable, um, but it was a, it was a fun scene. It was a really fun sequence. 
Uh, I like they had the kids going off and find them. I like that they weren't afraid to kill the kill kids' friends either. <laughs> like they were just like, we're gonna be brutal and we're gonna do it. And I was like, thank you. Like you don't need to. And everybody died but her on there as well, which was was nice. That thing that he touches in the cave is that does that have any significance to anything you've read or in the games? So it might just be a little while for me. Maybe that is something that I'm not aware of. But as far as I remember. Uh, I, I don't, I don't recall like that, that, that object. Um, it might be something like that, uh, that I, that I missed or just because I have not played a Halo game in a little while. I've yet to play Halo Infinite and I'm, you know, the, the, the watch, just watching the show makes me think that I might pick up the controller tomorrow, probably because I am working tonight, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I might pick up the controller, finally start playing that game. But, uh, yeah, it, it makes me want to look back into it because right off the bat, I do not recall that, uh, that, uh, device, uh, in the games. Yeah, it was a cool device, and that was obviously the the catalyst to get this story going. I I think you know people complain about the differences with this in the game, but if I mean if you just follow the game, I guess it would have just been them shooting on top of a halo aliens. And I think they're gonna they're trying to humanize it, they're trying to connect with an audience more and tell a more intriguing story for us to get us going. So let's get right into Master Chief. Then he touches that thing. He starts having these flashbacks, possibly memories, possibly who knows what they are, right? They're, well, I mean, they're clearly memories, but you know, they're trying to play it up. Like they don't know exactly what's going on. And that uh, kind of changes his dynamics and his thought process. And he goes against the grain. And in doing so um, he saves the girl and he takes off his helmet and reveals himself, and that was a big no-no from my understanding of going into this, was you don't show his face. So, Rob, um, for, for me, though, I, I didn't need to see his face, I'm, and I say that with even Mandalorian, I don't need to see, I don't care about their face, like, there's nothing. But it, he was proving a point, like, I'm on your side now, and I and he didn't understand why. So what? how did you feel about that? Did it work in this scenario, and you're okay with it, or are you like, I wish they just kept that out? I I 100% uh, see why they would want to do that, and I think it's just the best way of uh, you know get, getting her on his side, like you said, for her to understand that she's not just a robot because and and uh, no, not just a he, he is a human being underneath it all. So I did think it was important, and I'm not as upset as others are. Like you know, I think what I think it would have been cool if they had been able to do the entire series Mandalorian style without taking off the helmet uh, whatsoever. Yeah, I do think that would have been cool, but for them to take off the helmet does not piss me off any regards because I don't think that it's, I don't think that leaving on the helmet is as important as a lot of people think it is because unlike something like Mandalorian, where the reason he doesn't take off the helmet is completely plot driven. It's completely story driven, right? The reason he doesn't take off the helmet because it's the creed. It's the Mandalorian creed did not take off the helmet. Meanwhile, in Halo and in the Halo series, there is no such creed. There is no, there's nothing story-wise really for them to take off, not not be able to take off the hel their helmets, right? Like you know, if it, will, will, will I feel differently about it if like uh, uh, two episodes from now suddenly he's jumping onto alien planets without the helmet on and running around shooting people without the helmet on? Yeah, I'll feel I'll feel I'll feel a whole lot differently if he starts going into battle without that helmet on. However, for him to take it off in leisure situations where he's just sitting there and not in battle, that I understand a heck of a lot more. Well, here's a question though, because he's taking it off. And when he took it off, they lost, he lost, they, they canceled the signal to him and uh, UNSC. Like right. they can't reach him anymore. So if he puts it back on, theoretically that signal would be regained. So you almost think like he has to figure a way to take that out of his helmet before he can put it back on. I, I think I'm, I'm kind of wondering how often he's going to wear the helmet going for, I think he's going to like you said, I mean, we see it in the trailers anyway, but he's going to going forward, obviously in space and whatnot, but now there's a danger also. They're adding a danger, a dangerous element to it where once he puts that back on, they're able to see through him again and figure out where he is and track him and all of his movements. Right. And, and, you know, like it, that's why I'm saying like, you know, I would hope that, within the next episode, it's like, that's, that's, that's 100% the reason why he took it off. Right. Because if he kept it on another reason would have been that he would, they would have seen every single move that he was ma making. Right. And doing and so forth. Right. So him taking yeah. off is also strategic on his part as well. However, I would hope that he would find a workaround over, over time and not, and you know, so they don't, they don't see everything that he, he sees at all, all, all times, like uh, within the next couple of episodes, because again, like I, I, I think that's where you might lose some people over time. If, if he just w starts, w starts 
take off the, uh, that helmet and leaving it off completely because of that sole reason and them trying not not finding a re reason for him to put that helmet back on that i think could uh might not play so well i mean depending on how they uh, how they uh explain it but but right but just right off the bat basing off of off this that helmet is too iconic for halo for him to just leave oh. it off Clearly, you've like, got it behind you. Well, yeah, but I just mean in general. It's like you know, you 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 pick up any Halo game and, and stuff like that. Like that helmet is essentially front front and center. Like synonymous that's that is so synonymous with it that now if you take that helmet off and he's leaving it off from now on, or he only puts it on occasionally, you're 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 fighting against the audience that you created this thing for. And I know that they obviously want to create a whole different audience and appeal to more casual people because something like Mandalorian, which was able to pull in Star Wars fans that aren't uh, sorry, Star Wars fans and also fans that aren't Star Wars fans into it by, you know, giving them things that they really like. Um, I think they want to do that, but they also shouldn't want shouldn't want to alienate the people that they uh, yeah. also sort of made the show for. Absolutely. And that's the thing you made this like. <clears throat> this is a a video game with a following and P and it's video game industry is the biggest industry uh, in entertainment and you can't tell me that you know all those video game gamers that play Halo which is a massive game wouldn't come and watch your show uh, a weekly if you just follow it a little bit so we'll I don't know we're going to see how it goes I've seen a lot of positive actually people have been I mean I've seen a lot of hate but a lot of people that I know on, online not no but you know socially they seem to really be enjoying this first episode they enjoy the first episode for what it is and I think. You kind of almost, rem I, I, and I'm saying this as someone who hasn't played the game. The last time I played the game was at your house, like five, six years ago. <laughs> and whenever that was, it was like, hey, look, I know that was it, it, it was a whole group of us. That were yeah, it was game. a long time. It's a fun, it's a fun game, but I think if you separate yourself from the game and you watch this on its own, it's got a lot of positive takeaways. It was a lot of fun, actually. Partly watching it, I was like, oh, I think my wife would enjoy this this uh, the show because it's kind of fun. it's kind of fun. It's sci-fi. A little bit. Like I said, there were some sci-fi elements that felt a little bit too much on the sci-fi TV show side of things and not... It, I don't know how to describe it. There's just a production value just felt uh, cheaper than than what they're... Like, it just, it was, like I said, like the leather jackets, there's just little things. I'm like, does it have to be like that? Well, and I immediately thought about you when we were on that scene in Madrigal. Because there were certain shots that I was just like, oh, James is going to hate that shot. Because <laughs> as soon as I saw it, and now I have the eye for it, where it's like, oh, that looks like Avengers. <laughs> that, <laughs> lo that, lo that, that looked... <laughs> That they tried to make it look really nice, but that looked very fair yeah. flat. Like yeah. I, I saw those some of those shots, and I'm just like, oh, James, well, they, like that. <laughs> they pumped the contrast up. Like half of it looked like a '90s music video. Like I was watching a music video from 1998. <laughs> it was like, okay, I, like they're just trying. They were at least they tried, but yeah, there was little things here and there that took. It didn't take me out of it though. Just like. You know, because everything is about how they spent 200 million dollars on this and blah blah blah. And I was kind of hoping some of the production value of it would have looked a little bit less like um uh what's that show uh, uh, andromeda <laughs> and more like you know something a little bit higher quality because it just felt it did, you know what it, it is it's it like looked, some of it looked like star trek discovery as well which is yeah yeah you know, that they, do, they do as well but yeah sorry continue what you were gonna say yeah which yeah it, that's a good i haven't seen discovery but yeah it looks like something like it's a, it's a lesser than it should be and, and I just, I don't know. It's like the one thing with Star Wars that I like, and one of the rings is so well, is like that lived in feeling where it's like, you feel like this is, I mean, it's not, I mean, this is the future, but it feels like it has a history to it. And it feels like these would, it would be real. And there's, there was so much going on in here where I was like, just little, little touches around it. This is so critical though. This is, this is why it's a review, but like the little <laughs> things I'm like, ah, you're trying so hard to be futuristic there. Like just reel it in and make it more modern. Like, I, I like the future is never what the future is. Do you know, like you know what I mean? Like it's always just like whatever, and and obviously it's Halo and you got to stick to it. But I want let's talk a little bit about um, the Doctor. What how, what did you make of the Doctor? I don't remember her name. Corte Halsey, that's like Doctor Halsey. Yeah, Doctor Halsey. That's, I think that's a problem. Is I don't know anyone's name in this other than Master Master Chief John T one one seven or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, that's the only name I can remember in this. Uh, but the Doctor. Uh, what, what did you think of the performance of the doctor? Did she remind you of the game? Was she well cast? And did you like what, they, what the hell was going on with that clone? 
Uh, well, yeah. So I, I think that that clone, once again, that's that's the precursor for uh, for uh, for uh, uh, Cortana, because Doctor Halsey, if you were if you were playing her uh, playing the like first or second game, basically Doctor Halsey, that character has already passed on. I believe, like she, she she's already, she's already gone. She she's dead, and basically, uh, the thing that she left behind is the uh, is the uh, AI, the Cortana, mm. right? So it, it's Cortana is basically based off of her, in in, in a lot of senses. And Doctor Halsey, she's basically created the Spartans. Like she, like the story of the Spartans is basically they're taken out from a very small age. Like uh, I, in fact, I, you might even remember it. Uh, the the uh, sh uh, l little short that I did in school. Uh, it was uh, it was a Halo Reach uh, trailer that I did, and uh, Doctor Halsey was in that in, in in my little trailer. I cast I literally cast my own Doctor Halsey uh, for that trailer. Uh, and uh, she basically recruits them from a young age, uh, kids, and then trains them up. And then when they're ready, I think it's around 14 years of age, that's when they start doing augmentation to them. And basically is like, you know, she she does augmentation to them. So their bodies become basically like Captain America type bodies, because those types of bodies are the only things that can withstand these suits to put them on and to, for their bones to just not break and go, go, go brittle wearing these suits. They have to have that augmentation in order to be able to go through it. So uh, she's basically, yeah, she's, she is the, uh, uh, if, if I'm going to go Captain America again, I'm going to, she's, she's the Erskine of it all. She's Stanley Tucci. That's, that's, awesome. that, that's who she is of it all. I'm looking forward to learning more of the backstory within this show. And I liked, I think, you know, that's part of the reason why they're using Master Chief in this way is that that's how you get to that backstory. And that's how you tell it without starting it that way or having like a, uh, you know, uh, a boring just like voiceover where they're doing it. I think I, I like how they're doing I mean, I haven't seen how it plays out, obviously, but I like the way they're doing that. They show them with the flashbacks. One thing, though, that was curious to me is, is she seemed kind of happy that he got these memories that he under that he was starting to remember from his previous life she kind of has a smirk like a smile to her face like she's like hey that's a good thing that's a good thing and she doesn't want him she obviously does not want him dead probably because she's known him from for so long but what were your takeaways of that like i i, I like i like that aspect of it because i think that's going to make her dynamic a lot more uh, intriguing going on in her relationship with with not just master chief but the other spartans because i think at some point there's going to be friction between them on some level uh because they're going to find out what's going on or maybe they want in on what's going on so uh, for me i like i like that because i also like what they're doing with unsc is like how they're kind of like they're, they're kind of a corrupt organization and she's on this other end of it same with uh the the general's daughter and what i like i kind of like that aspect of it so what did you make of of the doc, dr halsey and her um her feeling okay with his memories coming back and flying away at the end yeah, I, I feel like she 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 definitely had that part where she felt okay about it, but she also like it's also in that moment where uh, when she asks him what he saw, and then and then and he says what he saw that he saw like you know uh, people like she had a, she had a kind of a scared reaction immediately at that point. Yeah, yeah, her first guy. time, yeah. Yeah, her first time, like she was a little bit, she was a little bit scared because I don't know, maybe, maybe at that point she might have been like, "Oh, this is too soon," or something like that. It could be something, something along those lines. Maybe she was a little worried because, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, these are guys, and and, and she's really is uh, throughout the episode, she's really being put into hot water with with this whole situation, right? And you know, uh, her relationship with the uh, that see that character I wasn't too familiar with uh, the, her her superior. Her superior. Um, yeah, her superior, like the 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 the, the whole um, that whole situation, like is definitely a lot more muddied for her now, is, and ever since Master Chief uh, picked it all up. But you could you could even see the point where it was just like she ordered her and the, the rest of the Spartans to protect Master Chief, so they're already like you know creating their own like faction within uh, the UNSC, and you know. I'm, I'm I'm curious. I'm very curious to see how this all plays out because this this dynamic within the UNSC is a little bit different than what I was expecting, but also intriguing to me. So it could still go one uh, one or two one of two ways, but right now I'm still very intrigued as to where this whole thing it, is going to go. It, it's easy for them to just do exactly what you expected, and maybe they would have got a better reaction out of people. But I like this too because the other thing, one of the things that I hate is just nameless uh, aliens in movies getting blown to bits and causing a threat. I like the way they look and everything. I think they're very cool in this. But I love the idea that 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 
yeah, there's different factions, and maybe at some point we're going to have to see a, a war with all the humanoid beings in this as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the villains in, in this thing. I love the the creatures at the beginning, those aliens that came down and were attacking, and no one knew exactly what they were, uh, and they were indestructible, uh, unless, of course, a Spartan used a weapon, which whatever. But <laughs> I'll let that go. Wait, but they were like... I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that. I, I I think the number one thing that I noticed because again the key thing about their armor and their sh and their shields and stuff like that is that they have the little outer shield on the outside. So as soon as you break that thing down, basically anything can kill it. But their their weapons uh, are do do a quicker job of taking down that uh, shield than than the other ones. So that's okay, that's sure. the key part. They, we'll go they... we'll go with that. We'll go with okay. That. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Continue. So anyway. we'll, go, we'll go we'll go with that. Uh, I, I, I thought they were really cool looking. They did their part. I like that one guy in the cave. Uh, and then he obviously got away. But then we go to their planet, which was not a Halo still. But we go to their planet. And then you see like that weird uh, never ending story uh, labyrinth uh, puppet creature talking like, oh, oh hammerhead. Oh, oh. And saying what he says. And then, oh, and then, and then we have a young, a young, uh, a young girl, a young woman, female. Uh, is is wearing her weird uh, that was also felt like eighty sci fi fantasy garb and she's human she is a human and she's reading a human text is she from the game and the uh, so that is that was beyond me see and that that threw me off too and I don't know maybe I'm just misremembering part of it but yeah I I did not remember that dynamic within them either there there is a very interesting dynamic in in the covenant and the hierarchy and the, and 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 stuff like that that they haven't really touched on here but they 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 touched on something like you know with this that was a little bit interesting to me as well with the prophet that was, he, he he's a prophet he's basically one of the hierarchy of the uh of the uh um the covenant basically but um yeah like i'm, I'm curious for them to get further on into it and especially start showing all the different species that are within the covenant so yeah it, it was limited for sure because it's like the most the, all, all you got of the covenant was the, really the beginning scene and then that one scene and that was it right like uh but I, i'm curious to see where where they go with that as well because i am not familiar with that human character really in in terms of the covenant as well for, for for me as the outsider looking in just watching this as a show i was okay with the amount of uh covenant that we got because it was i mean it was following a different story and and their story is coming, and it really intrigued. Like her reading the human text really intrigued me, and I'm like, what is like? There's a the the one thing that that I hope is that it seems like they have a story planned out here for this uh, season at least, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes because right now I I think like you said that the the relationships more than anything else are really kind of are keeping this thing intact um that they're really intriguing and it's gonna i think i mean maybe they're kind of going with like a mandalorian game of thrones like all that kind of thing going on in this and that's their overall plan is is making a tv show that's that's reminiscent of those uh, various ones combined which makes sense i mean you know that's where we are uh but i like i kind of liked where they were going with it um i don't know what you do what you do with the covenant because they don't speak uh, English and then the the big guys just seem like they just like shoot people and stab people with their double swords, which I like. I like those swords a lot. I can't wait to see more of them. We got to get more of them. Uh, but but I, I'm curious now where they're going. Where is Master Chief and and uh, what was the girl's name? Where, where are oh, they? Where are they heading? Quan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Quan. Yeah. Quan. Well, yeah. well, well firstly, they got to find a way out of there. I guess this <laughs> is the, the number one key thing. Um, but uh, no, I guess they're not yeah. out of the woods yet. Yeah, they're not quite out of the woods yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, they they definitely got got themselves a head start, I suppose, with uh, that whole situation that happened there. But uh, yeah, like. It, it does intrigue me a little bit because, like you said, if they had just gone with the games and, you know, just like, you know, right off the bat showed you Cortana and the Halo ring and all this stuff, like, there wouldn't be a lot to look forward to. You I know, mean, I'm thinking about, you know, the various characters, like, you know, we just mentioned the Covenant, the various characters that they could show off in the Covenant that are in the games, like a character like the Arbiter, which is someone that I'm a huge fan of, and if that character at uh, in the beginning scene that gets away turns out being the arbiter that will be amazing um, and uh, knowing that you know Cortana is coming knowing that they'll, they'll get to the hail rings eventually they'll get to the flood I, 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 I can't picture the flood being a part of this whole this first season maybe they end off with the flood 
Uh, but so that would be that'd be something. So that's more for uh, I guess m- more diehard Halo fans to know what the flood is. But uh, yeah, basically, yeah, you can just kind of see them back there. They're kind of basically kind of um, they're, they're they're very much actually uh, uh, alien expired inspired a little bit. I think uh, oh. alien a- a- alien meets zombie a zombie apocalypse that, that type of thing. okay. I'm that's, done. That's what, I'm that's done. That's what the kind of characters are. All right. How many episodes until Doctor Halsley dies? Dr. Halsey? Ooh. Halsey. Halsey. Um, Halsey. I'm going five. I, I, you're going, you, you think five? Wait, how many episodes are there? I believe there's nine or ten. I think it's nine. Yeah, three to five. She's gone in three to five. See, I think I think she's going to last longer than that. I wouldn't be surprised if she makes it out of season one, but not much out of season one. Um, The finale. Yeah, it could so be a finale thing three to or, five or the finale. episode for an alley. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see like her, 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 her dying in episode eight or nine, or making it into season two and dying at some point in season two. It all depends on how they're, how they're. I, I I'm so curious about the framework of what, the way the season is going to work because I, this whole thing, this whole dynamic within UNSC, uh, makes me curious as to how long they're gonna they're gonna play this out is this gonna be a full season thing or is this gonna be a couple episodes i don't know like i'm i'm cu- i'm very curious to see how this you know yeah we don't, we don't know what the versus master chief is gonna be so and i'm glad yeah. that, I know, that, that i don't know i know what's i know what's coming and what could be coming but at the same time you know if they're not uh picking they if they don't want to use the games as roadmap as much as you know we thought they would then you know who knows when they if when or if they're good some of the stuff that i was just talking about my my concern with this episode was i was like oh is he just going to come back and they're going to wipe his memories again and that's going to be that and i hope we don't get to that point i hope he he remains what he is and he's different and he has this knowledge in him and i don't want it to get wiped out at all i fear it's gonna happen like th- another few episodes is like well you're back to us he's like yes i am i mean you know and then he's hunting kwan again or something i this my hope is that they they, they don't do that and but uh, but again it feels like they have a story mapped out it feels like this is mapped out and they're not I, well, based on one episode i hope they're not making up as they go along i guess we'll know better <laughs> next week but but I really enjoyed what, it, what we saw today. Rob, your final thoughts on the first episode of Halo, the series that you've been waiting your whole life for. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I really liked it for the most part. I didn't love it, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. I'm very intrigued as to where this could go. Uh, but also, I also feel like it could go the wrong way same time but i i I, i'm open i'm I'm open to it and the fact that you know one of the things that they talked about recently has has been about you know steven spielberg's involvement and the reported stuff about steven spielberg apparently being very hands-on with the show is a little uh um i'm i i enjoy that aspect of it because it means that they got a quality storyteller (laughs) involved with the series in more than just you know put his name on it type of way what what were some of the things that you weren't that, that you didn't like? You just like just off the top of your head. I, I I think it's because like you know I like the the that their openness of the way the way that they're going with it. However, I have reservations as to how it like how it will resolve. Like that's my number one thing. It's like oh I'm very interested in this UNSC dynamic. However, it could go very badly very quickly because if it's if if it's just if this is the story and the covenant are just on the side somewhere and that's about it and it's basically you know uh halsey and and the master chief versus unsc if that's the story of this series i i i i I, this whole first season then i would be a little bit uh, that's where my reservations are because um you know, in in a case of something like Game of Thrones, and you know where it's going, and you're just waiting for it to get there, and just like, oh my god, like this, this was amazing, and and loving every moment of it. This one has me a little bit more reserved because I don't know where they're going, but it's also, it's yeah. also an, a, interesting to me because of that same fact. Yeah, and like, and, and what you said, like how it's like, you know, it's it's clear they invested a lot of money into this, but you know, there are there's been some workarounds, like you know, the stuff that didn't look as good. Right. Yeah, I think though I think um the covenant is going to take a backseat for a while but they're building something up to them. Something is being built up. They they're obviously laying the groundwork for that. Uh but I think we have to get through this stuff with the UNSC first on some level. 
Um, but well, time will tell, right? This is episode one. I thought this was a good introduction to the world of Halo, uh, especially for for someone like me who uh, is familiar with the games, knows the games, so doesn't know a lot about them. But I like I said, the the production design, the costume design on Master Chief and the other Spartans, I thought was just phenomenal. I love the way they moved. They you could tell they were superhuman. Uh, they were fun, and I liked. I did like that they had fun with them doing stuff and that opening action scene was a lot of fun save for a few shots obviously but it was a lot of fun and it was it was a good time and i look forward to seeing more of that in more episodes not i don't want a whole episode like that but i like that that's how you you, you start it off you lay the groundwork for what this is you bring the spartans in you say oh they're not always bad and then we have this story going forward so i am i'm looking forward to season two and beyond and uh, learning more about um the covenant and all these other things that i don't even didn't even know were a thing Great, and yeah, I hope to I I hope to see the grunts soon. Those those, those are the guys I was referring to earlier. The, the, little, the little guys, the the little guys. Yeah, like for him to just be like, oh my god, there he is, ah! just running r- r- running around like uh, afraid of the Master Chief. And I love that they kept calling him Demon. By the way, that's that's straight out of the games. They oh, literally yeah? they they call Master Chief Demon because he's the guy that just shows up and he just kills all of them. Because yeah, he's just he's terrifying to them essentially. Ah, well, there you go. Now he's not a demon, though. He's he's kind of a nice guy with a good head of hair <laughs> not, on him. Not, not, not to the Covenant. Maybe to Quan, but <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> the Covenant was like, holy shit, he's coming. He's, <laughs> he's back. Like, yeah. All right, we're going to wrap it up right now. Rob, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you at? You can find me at Robert E. McDonald on both Twitter and Instagram. And also, uh, yeah, if you want to check me out on uh, uh, Letterbox, that is at uh, Nightwing with a six instead of a G. Uh, yeah, I've, I was actually watching some of the Marvel movies recently and one that I wasn't as fond of. But um, I watched again and Doctor Strange, it's much better than I gave it credit for. It's, it's a much better movie. I actually enjoyed Doctor Strange. Uh, all right, everyone, you can uh, give us a like and a subscribe and all that fun stuff. And until next time. May you be the master of your own universe.